Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to do another Q&A with Wall Street and this time we're going to look at Upstart stock and this is a question and answer session that Upstart Management, the CEO and CFO, held with Wall Street analysts following their third quarter 2022 financial earnings announcement. So let's go right into it. The first question comes from David Scharf and he wants to ask a longer term strategic question. Lending Club went out and got a bank charter. Pagaya has gone for pre-funding securitization. Lending Point have done a 60-40 mix. So the question is, are you upstart stock thinking about a different longer term funding structure? Because remember, upstart is experiencing difficulty in finding enough funding for its its borrowers. Borrowers are coming onto the platform looking to borrow, but there isn't any sources of lending available on the platform and so upstart has had to use its own money to lend to the borrowers when it prefers to have a marketplace model where it just brings together borrower and lenders and earns a fee for bringing them together so this analyst wants to know are you going to change your structure because right now it's constrained and you're making changes is this a longer term change what are you thinking and so the C CEO, J David Gerard comes on and says, we believe fundamentally in a marketplace structure in the sense that a lot of, a lot of lenders making independent deci decisions over the long haul is going to get to the right answer. So in essence saying no, Upstart is not thinking about changing its marketplace business model. In the short term, they are making some changes, funding some of the borrowers out of its own pocket but longer term it wants to hold this marketplace structure the next question comes from Ramsey El Asal from Barclays and asking about the balance sheet it looks like the number the balance sheet loans it looks like the number went up by about 70 or 80 million in the quarter to around 700 million this is speaking to what we we're talking about earlier in that Upstart used its own money to make loans and this comes on the balance sheet as balance sheet loans. It looks like it went up by 70 or 80 million in the quarter and Ramsey wants to know if this is going to go up or go, go down. What's the forecast? And the CFO says, I don't think we've necessarily guided to a specific guideline or a number with respect to our balance sheet. So saying no we don't we're not planning to increase or decrease we just had to do what we had to do in the most recent quarter because we were constrained we didn't have lenders on our platform so we just had to use our own money to make these loans and there is no plans to increase or decrease and the next question comes from Peter Christensen from Citigroup asking about how they're spending on lead generation now that the loan demand is falling and the funding is falling now that there is difficulty funding the borrowers that are coming onto the platform this analyst wants to know are you still spending aggressively to attract borrowers and applicants now that you don't really have money you don't really have lenders in the marketplace to fund these loans and the CFO responds that the spend is a function of how performing our conversion funnel is if our conversion funnel improves we will spend more on lead generation because it will be more economical in other words he's giving a grand general answer to this question but what it you know what we can infer from this is that because its funnel is not improving because the conversion rate is decreasing there's less lending on the platform it can be assumed that they're spending less on lead generation and there is evidence of this if you look at upstarts most recent quarters spending on sales and marketing you could see that decreased year over year so there is evidence that they are decreasing spending in this regard and the next question comes from Michael uh, NG from Goldman Sachs asking about transaction fee rate as a percentage of fund in principle how much principal in the quarter was self-funded so the CEO kind of answers the first question while 
tiptoeing around the second question here about self-funding. In the regards to the first question, he says, we're able to increase revenues by increasing fees on a per loan basis. Unit economics in each loan is significantly better, much more sort of gross profit per loan. So they are charging more per loan right now, and that is increasing. That's good news for investors, but doesn't uh, CEO doesn't answer the question about how much of the principal in the quarter was self-funded. But if we looked earlier, one of the analysts that an that suggested the loan portfolio increase 70 to 80 million, you could kind of back up into the answer of how much of the loan growth in the quarter was self-funded. The next question comes from Simon clinch from Atlantic Equities asking about the contribution margin and this question gets answered by the CFO Sanjay Datta and Sanjay says that we've been at times funding constrained and at times borrower constrained and at those times we've been borrower constrained we've actually acted to reduce contribution margins a little bit and so I think we're sort of bouncing around between those two states. And as we go into Q4, the extent we are funding constrained in any period of time, our contribution margins would be above the numbers. Okay, so let me explain that in simple terms. What uh, Sanjay is saying that when they have more borrowers and fewer lenders so they're lending constrained not borrower constrained they're able to increase the contribution margin right because they've got plenty of borrowers in the pipeline they can increase the fees on each borrower because they've got so many to choose from they're okay with the fact that some of them will will kind of not apply because the rates are higher or the fees are higher they're okay with that because they've got a big pool to choose from and at other times when they don't have enough borrowers to choose from to select from they offer those borrowers that are applying better terms better rates lower fees which in turn causes their contribution margin to decrease okay right now they're in the environment where they are funding constrained they don't have enough funding and they have more borrowers than they can serve and so this is going to work to increase their contribution profit margin because they're going to be more selective in who they lend to and they're going to charge these customers higher fees, higher interest rates because they, they can't serve all of the customers that want loans on their platform. And Simon Clinch uh, asks a follow-up question about finding more longer-term capital type investors and this is to kind of bridge the gap between when economic times are good upstart will experience sufficient lenders on the platform because they're not worried about customer loan defaults but now that the economic environment is poor lenders are worried about loan defaults and so they're not funding as much and so upstart management has acknowledged and noted to us um, those that are following upstart stock that they're they're trying to bridge this gap they're trying to find longer term capital investors so that they don't have this fluctuation in funding on their business and so their business can be more stable longer term and so Simon is asking if there's any progress on this front and the CFO chimes in saying that the partnerships are available but they may take some time to put into place because they're important and large and strategic so nothing more concrete than that to report on that right now but I think we're pretty encouraged at the opportunities that are out there mm, I don't know about that I don't know about that if you are in if you are upstart stock and you are in such a funding constrained environment that's causing significant declines in loan um, fulfillment in loan application approvals I would think you would jump at any of these opportunities to sign on these long-term partners and so the fact that you have nothing to report in you know a whole three or four months of work in this regard is a little bit discouraging to upstart stock investors 
I don't think this is encouraging as the CFO alludes to. But, you know, as management of a company, it's understandable that they take an optimistic tone, even if the trends are not looking bright in their favor. And I will end with this final question here from Sandy Beattie from Morgan Stanley asking a follow-up question on profitability in terms of the quarter and on the guidance. How are you thinking about managing costs? Of course, now that the top line revenue growth is stalling and decreasing. And the CFO again jumps in to say that they, you know, the reduction in force that we did really will have a positive impact on contribution margins. So they've already announced uh, um, layoffs. Uh, they were they laid off about 140 people, about 7% of its loan staff. And so that's going to help margins increase. They also decreased sales and marketing investments. So for now, they say if we continue to degrade, We'll sort of evaluate as we go, but beyond what we've done with the existing reduction in staff, there is no pl plans to go any further at this time. So the CFO saying that we like where we're at in terms of our cost structure. We've already laid off a significant amount of people. We have no plans to lay off any further groups of people. However, if things deteriorate further, we will evaluate as we go and we're not against having more layoffs to improve the profit structure. So that's encouraging to see that the management is um, taking prudent care of finances and cost structure in understanding that their business is in a slowdown, the economy is in a slowdown, to be prudent, to reduce expenses, to lay off some staff, to be you know, prepared for a prolonged downturn. All right, so that's all I've got in this installment of my new series, the Q&A with Wall Street Analysts. If you liked what you saw in this video, please hit the like and subscribe button. It'll help me make more videos like this one. And also, if you've got any suggestions on companies that you would like to see me do a Q&A with Wall Street just like this one, put it in the comments down below. I always appreciate comments and suggestions. And if you've been with me from the beginning of this channel, you will have noticed that I've taken a lot of the suggestions and made videos um, from the suggestions made in the comments. So don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Put it in the comments down below. I do take a look at those and I do make videos based on that. With that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. The Motley Fool is a company that provides investing insight and stock recommendations for all investors of all skill sets and risk levels. So I'm proud to partner with The Motley Fool to bring you 10 stock picks from their popular product, Stock Advisor. Stock Advisor has beaten the market by more than three times. Go to fool.com slash parkev to get your 10 stock picks now.